And um, yeah, I'm I'm really looking forward to take the session with the infamous Holger Sturm today. Um, you know, a living legend in the area of SAP security <laughs> and, you know, SAP since more than 20 years, uh, SAP security um, much more than a decade. And uh, yeah, myself. And uh, yeah, Holger, um, you recently also became author and trainer uh, in our No Monkey Academy uh, yeah. on the topic of um, um, SAP security. Uh, so uh, very much welcome you to become part of, uh, of our expert group of trainers uh, mm -hmm. with your company, Log2. Um, please tell us um, anything that you find important that we show, should know about Log2 and your work. So what's, what's currently the things you are after? Yeah, two decades are long. A lot of stories to tell. I try to make it short. Um, so basically, the the company was founded in two thousand three. Uh, we in the in the first decade, we did did a lot of standard SAP work. I'm I'm basically a logistics consultant. We did marketplaces. We did B two B business. And in two thousand eleven, we switched lanes, mm -hmm. and uh, became SAP security only. Um, Fortunate for us, unfortunate for the customers, uh, we've been testimony of a couple of major breaches, uh, especially in the first three years of, uh, of our business in, mm -hmm. until 2013-14, where, where um, customers were heavily breached, uh, complete countries were really just you know, taken over. And so we, we, we did a lot of security project and continuously ex expanded our services in helping, in helping out in, in um, in, in doing everything around security from, from really from the very first pen test uh, and, and even helping CEOs uh, creating strategies and getting a grip on all these attacks and what's necessary for international rollouts. And so we, we did the, the, in the US they call it the full enchilada of um, SAP security. And recently in the last two, three years, we really just were growing into also the area of non-SAP uh, technology because more and more uh, these topics are growing together because the hacker really don't care if it's SAP or not SAP. So they just they just want ransomware. They just want to um, to get the breaches. And uh, so it's, it's, it's a huge undertaking. Plus what we see now is that also uh, the, the international political situation really leads to a situation where this even already poisoned armada of, of hacker groups are, is really joined by international forces in conflicts and makes the cyber world really just uh, literally a minefield. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's like, like that, that's a very good pinpoint uh, for, uh, for, the, uh, for your recent live online training uh, yeah. that is bookable throughout our academy. Because as part of this training, you would actually make, um, um, and you know, I, I have been lucky to to be able to participate on that. You will make like uh, also a darknet research um, and basically yeah. like doing doing some threat intelligence with the with the learners yeah. together um, to you know help them getting a better grasp on the current threat situation, right? Yeah. Basically, the idea of this class was really come to that I often had in 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 my in my. Uh, basic hacker classes, two groups. One is the, the hands-on, usually non-SAP hacker who says, you know, just give me the command line where I can take SAP over. And then you have this group of auditors uh, and and uh, uh, audit people that, that are more, uh, you know, white collar and says, you know, what, what do I have to check? What, uh, what ha can I report to, uh, to the CEO? And to bring this group together um, was, is pretty, was pretty difficult, um, and then I found out that the uh, basically, if you look at the uh, Federal Bureau of Information Security in Germany, the BSI, um, they have really good guidelines that covered both, you know, mm -hmm. major attack vectors and translate this also into the terms that an auditor understands and into legal terms. And I found that their rules and regulations really make a very good SAP pen test playbook. And so we go through it. So it mm -hmm. it covers all the basics. It covers everything that, from a legal perspective, even critis, critical company, critical infrastructure co uh, companies uh, needs to fulfill, and also is enough room for hackers to see how can they can attack the single 
uh, the single layers and everything. So this gives a very good overview uh, of what is the core of SAP security um, in terms of hacking, in terms of auditing, in terms of jurisdictions and uh, legal stuff, and uh, gives gives a pretty comprehensive one. And we put this into a class and yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, actually, I'm, I'm, I, I know already parts as we mm -hmm. both have conducted as trainers classes together already. So I already mm -hmm. know some parts of it, but I'm also very much looking forward on the learners feedback in this uh, half day um, live class, actually. Yeah. Um, so I believe uh, the, the seats will be soon uh, not be available anymore. So um, take the chance. It's basically just announced uh, the earliest today. Uh, also on our, on our uh, learning offerings. Um, yeah, um, specifically if you don't know yet um, where to put your learning time into. Um, yeah, if you in general want to get notified on, on you know, updated and, and new learnings available on our platform, um, you know, just subscribe to the newsletter or follow us on LinkedIn and then you will stay up to date. And uh, as you already mentioned, Holger, as part of our advisory services, we also help some customers in terms of, of course, um, implementing a proper password protection and hardening measures. Uh, as you also do, you have a very, uh, um, a very nice offering, uh, which you are calling a hacky now, right? Uh, mm -hmm. So doing this in kind of a webinar style. Um, so I yeah. really, really like the approach. Uh, can very much also recommend this for entertainment purposes. Um, but uh, as you have already mentioned, also in our practices when conducting a penetration test, we, uh, we are um, incorporating the BSI recommendations actually, yeah, on, and reference to them. Um, yeah, so what are we talking about today when we're talking about hacking passwords? Um, so I'm going with, with Holger through, let's say, what's the current state of SAP password security? and where do organizations fail uh, at the moment and where they are going to fail or where they will fail, um, let's say in within the probably next five to 10 years. And, um, you know, taking this away for you with some uh, grasp recommendations and we're happy to, uh, to have an open discussion with all of you. Um, yeah, so Holger, my very first question. Also, as, as I'm really curious on the topic, uh, and you already mentioned the forensic projects you have, uh, because also my very first forensic project activity in terms of SAT, SAP was, due, was you know, kind of root cause by, um, by disclosed passwords. So what's the state of SAP password security from your point of view nowadays? Yeah, the, it's, it's actually the... the um... Yeah, pretty not sad, but but uh, surprisingly bad picture of of security because if you look into the SAP systems pen tests or just on quick security checks, um, you you really notice that eighty ninety percent of the people have of of the companies have still these weak passwords where you can see these B code hashes, these weak hashes in the in the SAP table USR zero two, or the passcode hashes. And um, that's what the hacker needs. So it, uh, the, the very first uh, prey they are going to is really getting these weak hashes and throw them into uh, uh, the, the hash software to get the real word. Um, plus that um, I would say still in, in about 50%, especially in larger landscapes, um, when, you, when you Google, uh, what are the SAP default passwords? You get uh -huh. these typically five passwords from Substar to TMS ADM um, and uh, the early watch uh, user in the uh, famous Klein 066, mm -hmm. which you still find you know, in, in abundance in, in a lot of SAP landscapes. That is your very first entry. And usually really these default passwords will, will work when you, when you try it long enough. And then you have your foothold and from there you can just get the next week passwords. And, and you hope that the password you get, especially from technical users, is the same one as in production. And, um, and then you have already everything you need to, to traverse the landscape and, and plunder the, the production system. Right. So the passwords are really the, the weakest part of SAP security and really, really 
securing these passwords should be priority number one in any system. And not only the production system, you need to clean up Q, uh, Q&A and especially DEF as well. And uh, so to take this major, major attack vector uh, out, you know, out of bounds. Yeah, yeah, I, I very much can confirm with that as by my experience. Um, most organizations completely underestimate um, um, the ubiquity, how passwords, SAP passwords are actually spread around in their environment. Uh, like yes. as, you were, as you already mentioned, you know, there is this two, three year old sandbox system as a, as a copy from production, having, of course, still all of the the, the, the recent passwords of the service users in the in the actual production system, but actually nobody takes care about the security of the system. Um, also, you know, these these SAP is is a is a password store not only for the password hashes, but also of course password store for being client to other systems to connect to. Yep. Um, yep. So being it you know RFC passwords and things like that. Um, and yeah, very often, uh, you know, you still also find in code reviews that, you know, there's whatever custom uh, custom program that has a plain text stored an FTP password uh, or something like that. Um, so I think it's it's really, really completely underestimated by, by most organizations in uh, how different ways and, for example, how different data storage um, uh, passwords are stored within an SAP environment. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely, it's um, and still you you know just uh, this is as as in every other system. If you rely only on passwords as security, mm -hmm. basically you are host because passwords, you know, even complex passwords are usually in in an easy way to to ha to hash or to break, and um, this really makes makes every system vulnerable. And this is where these basic idea of two factor authentication or single sign on where the second factor is a ticket basically that um, you need to have additional ways in protecting it because just one string of 10 12 14 yeah. characters is really no security concept not in these times and especially not in sap where the weakest password algorithm is 30 years old and uh, yeah. known to everyone and um, on my uh, what I called my nuclear power plant here, it's a it's a Dell Alien laptop with a huge uh, graphic card, um, where it really can, uh, you know, hash an eight-digit SAP password in under ten seconds. Um, so, uh, it's it's a uh, password is not a protection. Yeah. In, in... And I also want to emphasize the human aspect here that um, as long as people, you know, especially in large organization have the opportunity just by the single factor to, ch to, to exchange uh, their access with one yeah. another, they will do so. So I, I once had a conversation with an SAP basis administrator who said like, you know, of course we can do investment in, into vulnerability scanners and so on and so forth. But as long as I just see like literally live that every day, 10, 20, 30 users are just changing their passwords and account access with one another. It's it's just like, you know, a misallocation of resources here. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, having having really a, a strict policy, it's still, of course, also an awareness thing. I also have seen like people in two-factor authentication environments then exchanging the two-factor token as well, right? So it's, it's also kind of a mindset and, and, and cultural perspective here. Uh, but it really comes down that, um, you know, you, you at least have to make it harder and you have to make it more obvious for the people that password sharing, account sharing is a bad thing. Um, still, though, even though for administrative accounts, uh, for one or the other reasons and being it just that, you know, having uh, power user licenses and SAP are, can be, you know, uh, can be costly yielding to, to shared user accounts. Is uh, yeah, is, is still a thing that can have bad consequences. Yeah, definitely. I mean, sharing password, sharing user accounts, really is it's not even a no go. I mean, even from an audit perspective and a legal perspective, uh, uh, EU uh, data and uh, general data protection, it's a crime. So um, forget about it. It has nothing to to uh, to do in uh, 2020 and plus. <laughs> yeah. Another, I think, which is really a kind of an SAP special thing is when, when you know, interfaces are being set up. 
um, yes. be between of different systems and so on. And then the, the question arises, what kind of user, what, what user type are, is actually used for, for example, for a certain system to system communication. And um, to be honest, I really think most, like either it's, uh, it's just, um, uh, just a lack of awareness uh, or it's you know um, on, on purpose that you just take the easier route. Most user administrators or basis administrators just to choose the system user for any type of technical connection, uh, which yields as a consequence uh, to the fact that these uh, passwords actually do never expire. Um, also, for example, when the password policies are actually changing. Um, in contrast, actually, to a communication user type, right? Uh, which I think it's kind of the the rarest found user type in SAP system. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm wondering as well. I mean, um, the the typical situation when you come to an SAP system uh, and and do the password check, you see that all dialog users have no longer B code and passcode and mm -hmm. only the 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 strong PVD salted hash. So. This part is fine. Then you see uh, the, the remaining, I don't know, from 100 users, 99 are um, the, uh, uh, um, the technical users, which, uh, which requires no password change and uh, still have B code and passcode. And then only one or two of these system users where you um, where, that have, for some reasons, password changes and whatever. How many, just asking, how many projects have you had where you have been asked by the customer to break the password hash because they, they, uh, they lost the, um, you yeah. know, the, the, the password? That, 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 that is a funny part, basically everyone. So once you make <laughs> your demonstration like, like we do today, so uh, getting the B codes, getting the passcodes, throwing into my favorite hash cat on my nuclear power plant and do this potentially at like, 10, 10 o'clock in the morning, so mm -hmm. that, uh, or, or, or like maybe short before lunch, you know, go to lunch break and after lunch break, you get the harvest, you see all this one. And then it's like, oh yeah, we see the password. That's great. So we can now, you know, th this very old interface we had where the, the 1992, the nephew of the IT uh, boss has programmed in Visual Basic an interface with a hard coded password. Nobody knows it anymore. Um, now we know it. So can you do that with all the other ones? I, and I would say this is like 100% of, of the customers where really the idea is um, the, the really hardcore bottom of all the interfaces, non-identifiable, That it, and, and usually they have like seven or eight digits. Some of them right. have just four. Yeah. And um, because they are so old and, and they are just heritage. And um, yeah, so it's, 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 a typical, it's a very typical situation. I thought about, you know, just... Uh, selling this as a service you know, <laughs> breaking passwords that nobody can identify anymore <laughs> yeah yeah I, I, I think i also had about five projects of this kind in in my yeah. career already yeah um like we already talked talked about a couple of the typical mistakes but i want to emphasize more on the root cause so why is it uh, why is it this hard to to do proper password management mm -hmm. for for sap credentials and uh, like as I was saw uh, as, as I saw this picture, I think that's really one part of the explanation, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so there is just too many hassle around uh, doing proper password management in SAP because those who are typically responsible for, um, you know, I, I know user admins in, in the SAP world who have to do about fifty to eighty password resets a day, right? Um, because, you know, people are coming back from vacation, haven't forgotten their passwords uh, and so on and so forth. And that's, of course, like, again, kind of a really misallocation of resources where, uh, you know, people can do a much better thing when they're, for example, as a proper uh, password reset self-service or something like that. Yeah. yeah. You know, that that's also uh, one, uh, one customer, uh, one basis admin told me, you know, the, the easiest hack on SAP where you really just, you know, literally take down the whole organization is you run a script on, on, a, on a single sub GUI for every user in the system, you know, typing six times a bad password. And after usually one or two hours, the script is running. Every single user in the system is locked due to, yeah. um, and then I said, they will, they will take, it will take days to reset them manually with the current process. So this is even an, an attack vector. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, certainly. Like it's a, it's a denial of service attack vector. It's yeah. uh, 
And uh, I was I was actually wondering why specifically in the SAP world, while you know all of the interfaces um, exists, uh, you know to do remote password management and so mm -hmm. on. Why in in many many organizations this is still like the, the the island where everything has to be done manually, right? Yeah. Um, I, I, I really don't necessarily get the point here. Um, of course, like, you know, commercial solutions are, you know, um, requiring a bit of money to, to have this uh, enabled for you. Uh, but, um, you know, just thinking about the return on invest when your user administrators can do um, like more meaningful things than resetting passwords, I yeah. think um, should, be, should be quite easy, yeah? Yeah, definitely. So. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think we, we, we also we had also talked about beforehand of the whole topic using password managers, right? And, yeah. uh, you know, just, just refer, uh, referencing to the Uber breach where you yeah. know, the, <laughs> the, the, the master password was just in a PowerShell script for the, uh, for the password manager. So... Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it, it's not even Uber. I found it really also in, in two, uh, two further uh, pen tests. I mean, what happened in Uber is, um, th there was kind of a script kitty, uh, I at least pre pretend to be a script kitty, 18 year old script kitty, um, broke into Uber uh, with a uh, with an admin password that he bought in, uh, in the Darknet forum. And then he was looking around on this uh, admin one, and then he found this one PowerShell password management script, maintenance script, and it had the master password for mm -hmm. the I don't know for the, from the password management software that had all the major server credentials, all the major super admin credentials for every single instance in Uber. So for every sub company, for for everything from Twitter accounts to whatever. So and everything, and, and they were all the admin passwords. So mm -hmm. this was not like even uh, <laughs> the 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 holy grail of of hackers. It was like I don't know the atomic bombshell of of whatever a hacker can do. And then basically he had he could do everything so basically he did and then um but it was exactly that so uh, you know managing all these strings for for whatever reasons and um, so even if you have an admin network with everything but as long as there are powershell scripts with encoded and clear text passwords hmm. maintaining that stuff you know it's it's like you can even just Put uh, write the ones on the write the passwords on the whiteboard. So it's 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 a huge one. But even all the other companies which were lay, which I found the pen test later uh, after the Uber breach, and I told them, hey, you need to fix your concept of having PowerShells laying around. Mm -hmm. um, it was like why? So you know, only admins can do it. Uh, the the user does not know what's inside, and it, it was just total negligence. To uh, and I really I couldn't get that because. Uber paid so many millions uh, on that breach and just you know doesn't count. <laughs> and, and you know what's the what's the what's the typical approach that I find specifically like the the let's say the the, the old dude SAP basis admins doing? Yeah. They have their bash script where they are automating the the, the logon uh, to to the systems uh, via um, you know forwarding the password parameter to the sub GUI executable, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's and I, I've I've literally seen some some you know some of the classic examples where either like the SAP passwords are stored in the best script or the master password to open up you know the key pass API yeah, to okay, retrieve yeah. the password and um, you know yeah. uh, going from there. Yeah. Um, Unbelievable. So, so so specifically when you like you have the the the, the the, the the SAP basis admins, uh, you know, um, um, that, you know, did their training about 20, 30 years ago, uh, where this was kind of, you know, recommended in the, in the ADM trainings at SAP, uh, doing it this way to be more productive, um, you will certainly find something like that. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And yeah, that's, that's a kind of the question, where, where will we fail tomorrow um, with, with, the whole password management, or I hope that we don't fail. Um, so maybe, maybe we can take the chance here and uh, and at least make uh, ma making some organizations here with listeners uh, in the in the audience not failing in the future. Um, so yeah, um, like the the very first thing, also of course because of LastPass that 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 came into my mind is 
everything moves to the cloud. And also when it comes to SAP services, uh, also SAP has some ideas of moving passwords into the cloud. Um, as far as we know right now, that's maybe not the very greatest idea, right? <laughs> um, it, it, it really depends. I mean, I, I did also some bug bounty hunting on, on these password stores. And uh, also, there, there are a couple of them who who, uh, who tell you there's a one million dollar bug bounty if you really break it. Um, and you have to say that the algorithms they they have. First, I was skeptical. I was just you know had the same picture as you here put here in mind, <laughs> was putting passwords in the cloud. If it is done the right way, it it could be a great way. I mean that. The, there is a cryptography behind that is really just fascinating when it's done right. Mm -hmm. And uh, but but the last sentence is really the problem because LastPass was not hacked because the password was weak or the algorithm was weak um, or the database was not protected. It was through a third party supply chain hack. So, you know, bypassing everything. And as long as these holes, loopholes exist um, and and not everything is really secured the same way as, as the front side. So um, it's it's like, uh, I, I usually say it's like uh, in, in these nightclubs, you know, you have these, uh, this doorman who, you know, who, who stays at the door or maybe two of them, you know, they are twice as big as you. And when you try really to brute force them, <laughs> you get a bloody nose. So, um, but in the same moment, uh, the, the VIP entry has no protection. Yeah. So <laughs> the intelligent people, you know, just do not, Get in battle with with the do with the door right. uh, or the door people, but they just you know look around and go from from the backside into the building, and this was what except what happened what happened to LastPass and where they really were really sloppy in protection, and and this where the disaster took place. Mm. And if you have more complex landscapes like SAP, and you have about being ten thousand people responsible for protecting this cloud. Of course, there will be loopholes. Of course, there will be misconfigurations, and as much more pe people are involved, as as bigger is the the attack vector on that, yeah. with yeah. the chance to find your loophole, and and this makes it dangerous. So, um, not not the idea of storing passwords in the cloud, but the the overall protection of everything and the focus. And um, for example, if you take Microsoft, uh, they were really open in the very beginning when they tried to do that for Asia with their identity management. They just gave hundred thousand dollar buck bounty for everyone who, who find major major loopholes. And I think in the two or, first two or three weeks of this program, they they spend a lot of money <laughs> on buck bounty. But after that, they were really sure that what they have there is, is really, I don't know, it has, has done a very long way to towards security. And SAP is really not going down that route. So they think hackers are just fine when they get like a $4,000 <laughs> and the mentioning on the wall of fame in, in their SAP uh, site. Um, it's, this is really the, the biggest problem of, of cloud security and, and mm. passwords in the cloud. Yeah, Let, let's put like a little bit of quantum computing into the mix. Yeah. Um, so like for those of you, that, that's that's like a, a transfer and setup of a, like it's a little bit old quantum computer, but um, uh, not thinking about, let's say the, the horizon about how things are moving in, in five years, but maybe in 10 or, or 15 years. Um, like where, where, where do you see, for example, us going with, maybe because of quantum computing and quantum computers breaking hashes that we require longer and longer passwords. Yeah. Um, the, the, I think that quantum computing is underestimated. Maybe it's, it's, uh, it's on, the, on the brink of being a really serious technology that goes wider and wider into the market. We, we have actually these days the, uh, the first worldwide quantum uh, computing conference with significant participation. Mm -hmm. uh, we've seen the quantum computers really just getting more and more uh, powerful besides really being just toy machines, very expensive toy machines. But um, it's pretty clear what they can do to classic algorithms that that counts as unbreakable today and, and mm -hmm. unbreakable only because of the computing power needed. So when it says it takes 13 million years to break that SHA, whatever or so, um, it's um, in especially these kind of linear algorithms where, where you have an input and it does something and you have the output and you take this back as the input. 
um, so that um, and, and you do that one million times, especially these kind of uh, straightforward algorithms. Um, they they are breakable then no longer in a million years, but just maybe in a matter of seconds. Um, and then there are algorithms that are even for a quantum machine hard to break. Um, elliptic curves are one of these examples, especially mm -hmm. when you when you create very complex uh, um, um, crypto cryptography algorithms around uh, this kind of mathematics. And so. I think we will see more and more the threat for 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 classic algorithms uh, coming out of these quantum machines, and I think they will be faster than than expected. They will be on the market. So I I expect them. If I if what I've read today about the conference was really something where I say, no, this will be more or less three to five years where we see them in the market and then break, you know, average average passwords even even faster. So. These general routes of you know just making passwords longer and more complex is really not the right way because you cannot run around with a password manager all day, not with your smartphone sending SMSs to whatever. So there there had to be really a, a, a different combination of different factors for authentication, and quantum machines definitely will break um, security. And if you if you look at all the uh, security project descriptions uh, today then they would say please design an, an um a password algorithm that is quantum safe so yeah, this is yeah. also an indication that the the idea already uh, is is in most architects mind yeah yeah so i i hope that uh, or we we all hope that uh, sap will also take this forward um in the, like for for the security of their products um so I think we, we can compile just some recommendations for SAP customers, what they should consider to, to protect their SAP passwords. Yeah. And um, yeah, um, um, you know, just, uh, just asking you about like uh, the, the list of recommendations here. Um, so you've already mentioned there are still customers uh, out there who have like password generated with 30 year old algorithms, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, top priority, if you haven't done this yet, uh, perform a password uh, cleanup and, and setting adjustments as recommended uh, from SAP since uh, like uh, or more, over, more than a decade already. But, you know, mm -hmm. we still see that in the wild. Um, you, you already uh, you, you gave a very interesting remark on the second recommendation, which is that when you increase the default setting of the um, uh, of the password hash for the PBD sorted hash, yeah. uh, that you can get an interesting effect on having like your uh, the the, pass, uh, the the password hash more secured, yeah. right? Yeah, I, I was just uh, hitting that uh, during a pen test uh, where the customer was using uh, SHA eighty. Uh, 80,096 as as the length uh, mm -hmm. of the of the uh, encryption, and um, suddenly the the uh, the end the the encryption string or the the resulting string was so long that it could no longer be displayed by any sub GUI. Mm -hmm. So every attack, either SE16N um, or uh, whatever, uh, or, or just uh, where you get the stuff displayed, no longer works. So you have to write an a binary extract of that field in order mm -hmm. to get the string first out. So this by itself is is a is a coincidence protection of of that one plus that um, I found out that uh, even um, even Hashcat, with which is always latest on on uh, implementing uh, SAP hashes, could not solve an uh, SHA eighty thousand ninety six string. Um, yeah. It was too complex. Uh, for and, those of you who are aware, Hashcat is uh, like an, an open source uh, password hash breaking tool, yeah, uh, has, password cracking tool. Um, not necessarily, I think everybody is familiar with that, but it's okay, kind yeah. of the tool of your choice, I believe, when you are using a GPU power, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> and so uh, how, how about the third recommendation? So I think like 2FA, uh, like implementing multi factor authentication is really not a new thing. Um, I have to admit regarding um, uh, regarding with what to start being a multi-factor implementation or single sign-on, I would rather go the way to um, implement multi-factor authentication first before thinking of single sign-on, just because of the fact 
that not every organization really has endpoint security, let's say on the on the on the maturity level necessary um, to have single sign on enabled. Yeah, but they should better have that. <laughs> of course, yeah. No, I mean that, that that's that's one of the things. Um, so like having a, a antivirus program. So it, it it's really you need to go through that effort because the the usually chain of command is you log on to windows and and you you suspect windows taken already a lot of um uh addressing a lot of issues with with uh, password based sign on so you may probably do a, a two factor authentication on the windows um on the windows machines and if this is coupled uh with an authentication against microsoft azure identity management even better because um it, it's it's really just putting a lot of it then you need to do a lot of efforts in protecting or not a lot of efforts but go through all the standard recommendation microsoft is doing for protecting your uh, customer endpoints not the admin endpoints local admin endpoints but the, mm. the usually customer endpoints on windows making sure they have no even not even the slightest hint of of local admin access mm really just uh, doing that then you can be pretty sure that a two factor authenticated windows user is is really a, it's already um taken care of. it's it's very hard uh, to break a uh, um um a windows user if if it has no local admin rights if it's antivirus protected and the network is protected against loading stuff from ex, ex uh, external ways you have nearly no chance in in getting the hashes and and getting the tickets from there once you are in windows um, you know it, it's passed to to sap to to the to the gui for for the single sign on procedure and if the single sign on procedure is also coupled with the snc and encryption of the communication itself the whole chain is is very well secured and uh, you, you just need to make sure that the same thing as with the cloud that you have no loopholes that you have no left and right uh, and, and no extra stuff if you have something like that with Citrix, even better. It's it's all yeah. about the, the if buts and maybe, right? <laughs> so yeah. that's that, that's that's the point, yeah. But you're yeah. like uh, you're making a point here in terms of you know that end users, SAP end users, um, in the in the latest consequence, of course, when single sign on is enabled, um, and you can remove their passwords in the system and so on. But still, as of now. Um, it's 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 not practical to also remove uh, passwords for administrative users, uh, just as being it for fallback purposes yep. in terms of uh, you know there's something going wrong with single sign on and so on, mm -hmm. and so the only way to go here is separating uh, their access to for, like from a different network, right? Yeah. Yep. Uh, um, unfortunately, yes. So it's it's um, there. There are a couple of. Um, not so uh, famous ways where you can also put um, uh, uh, based on the user exit in the uh, logon procedure to do something like um, smart cards and mm -hmm. and, and um, uh, you know using smart cards as as a two fa even for um, user based logon but that is very has a, has it's a lot of hassle and it usually has not the results you want to so when it comes to basics yeah. Uh, sub administrators who have two identities their regular user identity and then they need to log on with a firefighter or a sub administrator need to you know do it manually uh, which is then really the weak point right right and yeah um if you if you don't have yet implemented the capabilities of being of being able to rotate passwords quickly uh, in your sap environment and um you know, I specifically see that uh, I, I like last year, the end of last year, I had a customer where we we, we figured out uh, in a workshop that uh, with a lever process uh, due to actually shared users on infrastructure level and so on, with a lever process of um, of uh, his service provider, um, you know, making uh, making SAP basis services, 130 passwords actually would need to be rotated, right? Mm -hmm. um so you know it's a nightmare for for manual process here and consider like a scenario that that really you know for all of that areas where you can have your sap passwords you lost them somewhere you want to be able to rotate them quickly right um 
And that's that's really something to to think of to automate. And um, yeah, and it's 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 not rocket science today anymore. Yeah, yeah. So it's it, there is some discussion, you know, uh, how how often you should change passwords uh, because if you if you think of attack vectors like a keylogger, you know, as often you as more you type the password, is better because then the keylogger can really send much much more stuff. Um, and uh, but on the other side, you know, having a ten-year-old password is staying all the same. It's it's same thing. So it's uh, it's pretty bad. So that's why in in general, yes, you you should rotate and and force the people if you have password protection to really um, mm. do strong passwords. But um, so the 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 final uh, idea is basically either two FA or um, really an, a very tough protected. Uh, administration network mm -hmm. all right so holger that was great uh thank you very much for the interview actually we, we we're kind of running running over time so okay making it short to have um, plenty of options for q a um so next time actually um that will be 22nd of march uh, the march just got lost in here sorry about that um, there will be a second. Uh, there will be a session in February too, but we don't have the date yet aligned with the uh, with the with the other speaker. But in twenty second of March, we will be uh, having a talk with Martin Gallo, uh, the, the the infamous author of the Paisa project. So the uh, I, I think you can confirm that Holger probably one of the most important open source SAP security tools out there. Um, about how you know that that whole thing is going on there are come some yeah. latest developments uh, that he wants to share and yeah just as an opening question um have you already considered improving your password security as part of the s transformation so specifically as holger and i sees that um you otherwise maybe end up still with having 30 year old um, password hashes in your system or you know uh, password hashes gener uh, generated with a 30 year old algorithm specifically when you're doing a brownfield uh, transformation so you have to actually do something about it even though that uh, the security by default standards from sap are re really good but uh, depending on how you took the transformation journey you have to take care of that so um, yeah, Eva, please uh, 